What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is uh, Faultless Extracts here. We're building a four by eight grow tent. We're gonna be growing ice cream cake by Universal Nursery. All right, let's get started. So right now I'm uh, putting the PVC together to build the irrigation setup for the floor flex. I like everything to be super clean and organized. So I found these stands for the PVC that'll keep everything level so that I don't have any uh, floor flex tubing, you know, hanging down into the water or anything like that and keeping my area clean so that when I do clean up, it'll be easy. Each uh, sprinkler head has eight sidings and on each 4x4 tray I'm having eight, uh, eight plants so 16 total so all I needed was one T and one elbow for the end the hydro store I went to gave me a box of these vital wool uh, cubes to try out for free uh, shout out grow generation and Compton uh, they hooked it up they, they gave me this whole box to try out they did great no difference from Grodin or, or Rockwell uh, I mean they did great. Now I'm right here plugging in the uh, DU. It's a Vivo Sun, Vivo Sun DU and air purifier. It kept everything at, um, I mean, perfect 55 the whole time. It doesn't have an on or off switch, so it turns itself on when it needs to lower and then turns itself off. Plugging in the Blue Lab pH monitoring, uh, temperature monitoring for the reservoir. Um, and then it comes with this solution that you gotta calibrate. Um, the pH probe too, so that's what I'm doing right now. And on that wall, I also got the the light switch, uh, CO2 monitor, and uh, the air bubbles for the reservoir. So everything's inside the tent. Um, I don't have any lights going outside. This is in my bedroom, so I didn't want any lights on me while I was sleeping. So here's my reservoir. Everything's in there. Temp, pH probe, and two air stones. Um, and that lasts about a week um, and about four or five days during the end of flower. Um, but one thing is, is that I couldn't find any stands that would go inside of a four by eight tent. So I actually had to order these. They were three by two metal stands and I got six of them and then I just laid them all underneath and it fit the reservoirs in between perfect. You can kind of see them there in the corner and those stands I got on Amazon. Uh, right here I'm just cutting holes in all of the Rockwell because my dumbass bought uh, soil clones and then I bought Rockwell cubes, not thinking. So what I did is I just cut a hole out, put the whole soil cube inside and it did great. The lights are Ion 720 LEDs and the highest I was able to turn them the whole time was uh, 80. I ran them at about 70 to 80 uh, percent during flower. I tried to push it towards 90 but I, I couldn't. I started seeing a little bit of burns on the top and took it back. At this point I'm starting to get you know pretty stoked. I've gotten all the hard work done now it's just a pretty much a waiting game until harvest all I got to do is, is set up the scrog in about another week and then I'm good to go uh, I didn't prune pluck uh, I couldn't really reach the plants in the back uh, unfortunately so I just decided not to do any cutting not to do any pruning uh, and I, I topped them a few times before they got to the scrog but once I, I got them weaved in the scrog there was nothing I could do so everything went pretty smoothly through all, um, all nine weeks of growing. I even took a little vacation for three days, came back, everything was good with the, the blue lab setup and the, the light controller and the floor flex. I mean, once the reservoir is full and you have every all your feet in place, you know, you're pretty much good. I used the Athena uh, whole blended line for this this grow. Um, the grow A and B, Bloom A and B, Balance Cleanse, CalMac. I didn't use the PK or the stack. I used a bud candy. Um, the cleanse is really important if you're running with a floor flex because it keeps the, the uh, calcium deposits and stuff out of clogging the lines. So I just cut these down and uh, I'm immediately going to buck them off, throw them in vacuum seal bags, and then throw them into the freezer. I'm doing a little bit at a time, so like half a plant, buck off the buds, try to get rid of all the water leaf, throw them in the bags. I was just sealing them, sucking a little bit of air out and, not, and sealing them, not trying to really vacuum seal them, and then throwing them directly in the freezer. Just some, some really greasy, good 
good, good plants, man. Dense, just really happy with how this all came out. Fall growers do this, but I always pick my favorite branch, but this was just best I've ever grown, best I've ever seen, man. This is just great. close to 48 hours in the freezer um, wanted them to get super cold and then I, I did the extract did it in my bathroom so don't judge all the stuff right there I brought my air conditioner in the bathroom so I was able to get it super cold and keep it the coldest room in the house and then I had my harvest right freezer in there as well so I was able to do it all in there So I had my wash bag there um, with the 220 bag in it and then I had a pump at the bottom which would pump the water back out once I was done washing. There after I'm finished washing, I would pump it out through the screens, uh, filter it, and then pump the water back on top of the weed and then wash again. So you can see it better here um, in that trash can which I'm washing it on the bottom I have an aquarium pump that will pump everything out through the screens in the other trash can and then on the bottom of that trash can underneath those screens those bags I have another aquarium pump which I can pump it back to the first trash can. So this was the, the last wash, I did three full washes and then at the end I um, squeezed this bag, tried to get all the liquid out and then pass everything through those last screens. Then like I said I have an aquarium pump on the bottom so from the bottom um, all the water that's already been filtered I can just pump right back out and then I'm just putting it down the drain. And then I have a mason jar there that I filled up with a little bit of water to see if there's any trikes and uh, any heads left in that water. It's easier when you fill that up, then you can wait for it to settle and check the bottom and see if you see any ends. So the first bag I had set up, I just filled it up with ice so that I could keep all the heads that went through the screens cold um, while doing all the washes. And then I was using a foiler sprayer to, to spray that I used for my plants. And it was way too small, so I had to keep filling up that bucket, and it was very annoying. I wish I had a bigger one or just used the hose to connect it to the RO water. So I filled up the first tray there, got it in the harvest dry. Yeah, sorry, I wish I had a better view of the hash being scooped up, the hash being put in the trays, the hash itself, um, but you know, at this point I was tired and I just wanted to get done. Uh, I bet it was inside the harvest right for about two days. And then I pressed it at 200. And then 
I whipped it. Um, the first day I whipped it up just a little bit. I didn't really know what I was doing at this point. Um, I was trying to go for a cold cure consistency. By the third day of whipping it, I got this. Looked great. That was the dried ice cream cake finished. And thanks, guys. Like, comment, and subscribe for more content. I'll be trying to put some more content out soon.